All right, let's continue with section 2-2 two, two and more graphing and let's see how these shifts work. So these first ones are going to be called rigid transformations. I'm going to define them after we do some examples. So I'm going to graph two graphs. Uh, I'm going to do them kind of the long way. So if you do remember how to do them, uh, we'll get into that. But we're going to do x and then y equals x squared. Um, maybe we'll just do negative 2 through 2. Um, this is like the table method, right? We plug them in. What do we get? So if we plug in negative 2, y would be 4. right? If we plug in negative 1, y would be 1. Um, right, plug in zero, we get zero, and then we get one and four, right? One squared is one, two squared is four. So I'm gonna just adjust my graph a little. Um, so we're gonna say zero, zero, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, so one and one, one and one, two, four. Right. We're probably familiar with a traditional parabola. Um, I just want to do actual points because we're going to compare them in a second. So that's our parabola. Um, our basic y equals x squared. Um, let's see what happens if I do x squared plus 2. So I'm going to plug in the same points. Um, but if I do y squared plus 2, I get negative 2 squared plus 2. So what's that? We get 4 plus 2 or 6. So negative 2 and 6. There's 6. Um, negative 1 squared plus 2 gives me 1 plus 2 or 3. So negative 1 and 3. 0 squared plus 2 is 2, so 0, 2. 1 squared plus 2 is 3, so 1 and 3. And then 2 squared plus 2 is 4 plus 2 or 6, so 2, 6. So it looks like we're getting the same shape, but it's shifting up. What do we think? what it looks like. So that's called a vertical shift, and we'll define that in a second. All right, so let's do y equals x squared again. So I'm just going to copy the table since we just did this one. So go ahead and graph that one again, and then we'll um, look at a different graph and see how it shifts. So if you need time to graph y equals x squared, um, pause the video. Otherwise, I'm going to graph it really fast since we just did it. One, two, three, four. Right, y equals x squared. That's a nice, it's called a parent function, which we'll talk about later. Um, but we want to be familiar with these like base functions. Um, but x um, plus 2 squared we might not be as familiar with. So let's just plug in the same numbers. So negative 2 plus 2 squared in parentheses. So we're going to add first. So we get 0 squared or 0. So negative 2 and 0. Um, negative 1 plus 2 squared is 1 squared or 1, so negative 1 and 1. 0 plus 2 squared is what? 4? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so it's up here. Um, what happens if I plug in 1? I get 9. I don't have room for that, so it's way up here. So I'm thinking maybe I want to get some points on the left. It looks like maybe we have this side of a parabola and not the other side. So maybe let's try some different points, right? We don't have to do the same points. So let's maybe try negative 3 and negative 4. So sometimes I'm just guessing what points are useful. So negative 3 plus 2 squared, negative 1 squared is 1. So now we're starting to see that parabola shape. 
So I made a good choice on these numbers. So negative 4, we get negative 2 squared or 4. So negative 4 and 4. And now we can see that parabola shape. So again, it looks like the same shape, right? But now it got moved to the left. So we're gonna do some shortcuts so we don't have to make tables like this every time. So this is what a rigid transformation is. Um, rigid transformations are ones that change the position but not the shape. So the shape was the same for all of these, it just kind of moved over or moved up. Um, so the rule of thumb is this. Um, so if we add a number on the outside or subtract a number on the outside, these are going to move up and down because these are like outer motions. So since they're outer, they change the output. So that's why they move up and down because the output is the y value. So if we add a number we go up if we take away a number we go down so that was like the first one we added two and we went up two um, the horizontal ones are a little bit weird notice on this one we added two but we moved to the left um, and that has to do with the zero being shifted right because if i plug in negative two it has to do with the zero right so the zero would be negative two so it does the opposite so inner functions are going to affect the input so when we have inner it changes the input or the x. That's why it changes horizontal. Um, and so when we add, it actually shifts to the left because it moves the zero to the left. And we subtract, it moves to the right. So let's check out one example, and then we'll get into other types of reflections, and then we'll kind of combine them all. Um, but this is going to be really, really, really important for us, this summary. So let's find the equation. We have x cubed. What I like to do is draw that first. That's called the parent function. Um, the parent function are those ones we know. And I'll draw a little bit lighter. But we know x cubed looks like this. So let's go 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Just add some numbers. And we're going to shift down three units. So we'll do one motion at a time, one, two, three. All right, so it'll look like that. And so shifting down, so we have our parent function. Shifting down three units means we're going to subtract three, right? On the outside, right? It's an outer move. And then we want to go to the right two units. So that would be an inner move because it's inside. And then inner is the opposite, so it's actually minus 2. So we're going to inner, go to the right, 1, 2. So we're going to start here, and that's our function. So we have x minus 2 because moving to the left or right is an inner function, so that'll be within the parentheses. And then going down three is an outer function. So that goes on the outside. And so essentially this used to be at zero, zero, that little flat part on x cubed. And now it would be at two, because we went to the right two, and negative three, because we went down three. Right, we went to the right two and down three. So hopefully that's helpful. I do like Desmos. Um, so we can do, I like to kind of compare things, x cubed, let me open this all the way. Right. Darn it, I'm trying to make it full screen, but I, once I open it like this, so, so x, um, oops. Okay, well there, there's my lazy way of doing x cubed because it's not letting me type. Hmm. But let's see, x cubed. 
And so we can do like one motion at a time. X cubed, what? We went down three, so minus three. Oops, what did I do? It's hard to type on this tiny thing. Oh, I typed X with a subscript of three. Oops, X cubed, there we go. Sorry for that. Minus three. So you can, I think on Desmos, it's a little bit easier to see it moving down, right? But now it's at zero, negative three. And then when we do the inner function, X minus two, right? Left and right moves are inside parentheses. So you see that move moves it to the right. And then when I combine them, it'll move down and to the right. So I like Desmos for kind of just playing with the individual moves. Um, and then minus three. Oh, this is so hard to type on. And so now we can see that point is at two, negative three. And we can get rid of these guys. So there's my parent function in red and then x minus two, all cubed, and then minus three. So next video, we'll get into reflection. So these might be like mirror images and things like that. So I hope this helped with um, transformations, um, the vertical and horizontal.